BestBookBits.com brings you the book summary of The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins is arguably the most popular atheist writer slash teacher of our time. His background includes a PhD in zoology from Oxford University and has numerous popular and academic books on topics ranging from evolutionary biology to genetics. And in recent years, he has been in high demand giving lectures on the defense of an atheist slash secularist position, as well as critiquing the intelligent design movement. In his book, The God Delusion, Dawkins attempts to show the irrationality of a belief in God by attacking the idea of such a being on all fronts. He makes his case by proving critical examinations of the role of religion in history, in debunking traditional arguments for God's existence, and through the power of Darwinian natural selection as a replacement for supernatural causes. Chapter 1. A Deeply Religious Non-Believer In this short opening chapter, Dawkins makes a distinction between critiquing religions and a religious feeling. He uses Einstein as an example of someone who was a deeply religious non-believer. Dawkins portrays Einstein as someone who sees the magnificence of nature as something sublime and beyond our ability to fully grasp. This religious feeling that Dawkins shares is to be contrasted with a belief in something supernatural. The former is to be enjoyed, while the latter is to be rejected. He also calls on his readers to critique religion like any other topic in the public square, and remove the mystique surrounding religion's protected status. The recent Danish cartoon portraying the Islamic prophet Muhammad is a prime example where the public is afraid to say anything critical about a group's religious leaders. Chapter 2, The God Hypothesis This chapter begins with an attempt to show that the founders of the United States were at best marginal theists, but most likely secularists. He provides several quotes from Jefferson, Washington, and John Adams in support of this claim. The point Dawkins is trying to make is that many religious figures from history were probably only so publicly to achieve social slash political goals, but were privately secularist. He then goes on to explain Stephen Gold's concepts of NOMA, non-overlapping magisterium. To quickly summarize the idea here is that science deals with questions of how, whereas religion deals with questions of why. The two do not overlap, according to Gold, so there should be no friction between science and religion. Dawkins outright revokes this idea as an artificial wall, built by the theist who need an excuse when evidence doesn't support their claims. NOMA therefore allows creationists to continue holding a seat at the debate table, whereas Dawkins believes they should be discounted from the beginning due to an utter lack of evidence in their favour. Chapter 3 Arguments for God's Existence Chapter 3 is a whirlwind tour of some of the popular theistic arguments from history, none of which are covered in great detail, but each is given a brief description, followed by his succinct response. He covers Thomas Aquinas' proofs, the ontological argument given by Saint Ansel, arguments from personal experience and scripture, and finally, examples of admired religious scientists. In each case, Dawkins shows the inadequacy of the proof and alternative explanations using a secularist worldview. Chapter 4, Why There Almost Certainly Is No God Dawkins begins his chapter using an analogy originally used by Fred Hoyle called the Ultimate Boeing 747. Hoyle equated the probability of life originating on Earth with that of a hurricane sweeping through a scrapyard and assembling a 747. But Dawkins counters with this consciousness razor that natural selection could complete such a feat through successive slight modifications. While the chances the 747 being assembled is astronomically great if viewed in one step, it is quite conceivable if one views it as a large procession of reasonable probabilities all chained together with the natural selection as the driving force. Dawkins goes on the critique the intelligent design movement as largely a god of the gaps mentality, where one claims a designer is there 
is no scientific causal forces to be found. But Dawkins calls this being lazy and in the end leaves us ignorant in the many areas. Being satisfied to say God did it and research the matter no further. He concludes this chapter with an interesting take on the anthropic principle. This is a concept that the universe seems fine-tuned for life, implying a designer. He turns his argument around by pointing out the billions of planets in the sample of the universe, making life statistically bound to happen somewhere. He also draws on the multiverse theories that postulate multiple universes popping in and out of existence, thereby grossly expanding the possible outcomes. Behind many of these arguments is a common theme. God is his improbable explanation because it leaves open the question of who made God. Dawkins thinks that although a multiverse theory may seem extravagant, it is still more probable than positing a supernatural deity. Chapter 5 The Roots of Religion Dawkins explains religion as a byproduct of some other evolutionary process. As an example, he cites the moth that is built to follow the light, but occasionally this causes one to burn in the candle flame. It is usually a helpful tool for survival, but we only notice the instance where it doesn't seem constructive. In the same way, Dawkins believes that tools for our own survival create religion as a byproduct. He postulates that our dualistic tendencies, a belief in a mind-body duality, and a teleological outlook. The idea that one has purpose in life helps us our survival in some fashion, which gives rise to religious tendencies. This chapter concludes with the probability the most abstract concept in the book, MEMS. Just as genes are able to replicate and pass on certain traits beneficial for survival, such as an immune system or eyesight, cultural ideas and phenomena can be passed on through memes, which also are beneficial. While the mechanism to replicate is not yet understood, many believe this to be a system that religious thoughts get passed on. Memes might include ideas such as you will survive your own death, or if you die a martyr, you will go to a paradise. Chapter 6 The Roots of Morality Why are we good? Dawkins argues in this chapter that because cultures around the world share general traits of moral behavior, this supports the claim of a common evolutionary source. He concludes with an attack on religious, stating that we only exhibit good behavior because a God is watching over us. Chapter 7 The Good Book and the Changing Moral Zeitgeist This chapter is a long diatribe pointing out examples of inconsistent or immoral behaviors, ranging from Old Testament atrocities to religious wars in Ireland. He concludes with examples of believed atheist leaders such as Hitler or Stalin and how it was not their atheist worldview that led them to do evil things. Chapter 8, What's Wrong with Religion? Why Be So Hostile? This chapter is largely an extension of Chapter 7, where Dawkins points out more examples of the dangers of religion. He includes fundamentalists who believe they are right all the time, abortion clinic bombers, punishment of homosexuals, and the pro-life movement as examples. He concludes that faith fosters fanaticism and supersedes a rational, scientific approach to the world. Chapter 9, Childhood, Abuse and Religion Dawkins calls on parents to not indoctrinate their children with their own beliefs, but allow them to choose for themselves what to believe and encourage a skeptic mindset. He equates some forms of religious upbringing to child abuse. Chapter 10, A Much Needed Gap In conclusion, Dawkins ponders the idea of religion filling the role of a counsellor, an imaginary friend or an encounter in times of need. He exhorts us to struggle off these evolutionary chains and embrace a scientific outlook that is liberated by calculation and reason. Some questions for discussion. Number one, does the concept of an eternally existing material world seem any more satisfying than an internally existing deity? Number two, if our minds are the result of an evolutionary process, should we trust them to lead us to the truth or that they are even rational in the first place? And number three, should people with religious beliefs 
be required to provide evidence for their worldview. What then is the role of faith? And that's a wrap in the book summary of The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. Now, if you want to be a contributor and do an audio book summary with this channel, get involved now and email me at info at bestbookbits.com or DM me on Instagram at bestbookbits. If you want this summary via PDF, you can pop your email in the link below and it'll be sent straight to you in PDF. Check out bestbookbits.com, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've done over 700 audio, video, and written book summaries. Ring the notification bell, like, share, comment on what you think. And if you want to support Best Book Bits, we've done a book called Success in 50 Steps, The Proven Formula That Works. I've taken over 500 books, condensed them down into one fantastic personal development book. So get your copy now in the link below. Now, if you want to to achieve your goals quicker than you can by yourself. I've got a coaching and mentoring program, so apply now, click the link below and check it out. And if you want to grab our top 150 best book bit summaries, I've put them all together in one massive PDF, five parts, over two and a half thousand pages. Grab your copy now, click the link below. And if you want to take your year to have your best year ever, I've done a course called 28 Steps to Making Your Best Year Ever. So if you want to have your greatest year ever, check out a course we've done. It is fantastic. Click the link below and it will take you right there. Follow us at bestbookbits.com, the home of the world's largest free book summary website in video, written, audio format. 700 written book summaries there. And if you want to follow us on Instagram and DM me if you want me to do a book summary. Also, check us out on Spotify, where all our summaries get uploaded first on Spotify, then YouTube second. So follow us on Spotify at Best Book Bits. We're also on Facebook, where we run a free book club. So check us out there. And if you want to be updated with the latest book summaries via email, pop your email in the link below to never miss a summary. You can support us on Patreon at Best Book Bits. Check out our top 50 videos on YouTube. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got something from this. Tell me what you think about this, The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Take care. Bye-bye now.